if somebody thinks truth is subjective and not objective, then it's difficult to explore a person's certainty and the quality of their reasons and the reliability of their methods that something really is indeed in fact something that's true. You really need to help them recognize that truth is objective. And they probably recognize that it is objective in some instances, but they might be making an exception for other claims. But even that's worth exploring by using questions when you, you can SE that. So am I understanding correctly, there's two different types of truth. Can you tell me what you mean by that? Can you give me an example of this kind of truth compared to this kind of truth? You know, how do you, how do you, when you go to a class and you, you prepare for an exam, you can use real world examples to explore how they're using that word, but it's a mm -hmm. crucial, it's an important word that has to be cleared up. Yeah, for sure. And I, I just want to stick with truth for a second is so in a conversation where you're trying to parse out what truth is, um, and maybe you don't come to an agreement with the interlocutor. Is that something that stops the conversation or do you update your understanding of truth just for the sake of continuing the conversation? Like do, how do you, how does that unfold if you can't find an agreement? Awesome question. So when most people use street epistemology, we of course have our own views, positions, biases. We have our own definitions of words even, but what we try to do, or at least what I try to advocate for is to go with the meaning of words that your conversation partner is using because you're exploring their views. You're exploring their confidence that something is true. So you would be basically, if I said, listen, I'm going to apply all my meanings of words to your view and challenge your position. That's not going to help them. That's going to confuse them. Mm -hmm. You need to speak in their language essentially. So I adopt their definition of the word true. I adopt their definition of words and, and all this other stuff for the purpose of the conversation. I don't adopt it permanently, right? <laughs> but I'll say, okay, that's really interesting that you, you're viewing things in that way. How do you deal with this particular situation? Can you explain this? If we had two people with competing views, how would you determine who actually has the truth of the matter as you're defining that word? So uh, the way that we, I, I suppose, look at this is that people will probably be more willing to reflect on their own views and maybe even change their minds if you're talking in, in the language that they're developing for mm -hmm. the, the mind map that they built, right? That's, it's their map that, they're, that you're navigating with them. It would just confuse them if you started using different language. Mm -hmm. But in the process of you asking your questions, you're gonna probably help them discover on their own, in their own language, in their own map, that there's something wrong, something's not jiving here. There, there's, there's a conflict of some sort. But you're giving them the space to develop, to develop that and figure it out and view it on their own and then decide if it's important enough for them to correct their map, mm -hmm. right? This isn't me pointing and saying you're wrong. It's them discovering that I can't, I can't explain how this works exactly. And that's the process that gets people thinking. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going for. We're, we're trying to help people think about the beliefs that they formed in their own language so that they can determine if the time is right for them, if they need to make a correction. Mm 